be that which you can be influential, not for the sake of ego, but for the sake of really making a bigger impact and using that status, if you will, for good. Right. Um, and then also knowing that, you know, we can make a difference, we can give back, but we can also live a great lifestyle at the same time, you know, on a daily basis. So really living with intention and, um, and you know, loving people, being compassionate, being true to our, our authentic selves and uh, living out our truest purpose and passion and uh, whatever our dreams and visions are. So, um, yeah, just a really fun, positive uh, vision that we're creating here. And cool. um, I like to always dedicate these interviews to, like, always thinking about that entrepreneur that this particular interview will make a difference for, you know? Totally. So, yeah. Yeah, that's so kind of in a nutshell. Amazing. Yeah, for sure. What's that? I said amazing. <laughs> oh, you might be cutting out a little bit. I hope our, our connection is okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Um, and then where where in the world are you right now? So I'm currently in Bali, Indonesia. Okay. And um, but where and then where are you based? Uh, well, I'm location free, so I basically travel around the world, but I spend most of my time oh, awesome. actually in Bali. Yeah. So, I mean, even like I've just oh, got, fantastic. yeah, I've just got back from Malaysia. I'm in Bali for a week doing a mastermind, then head to LA, then Malaysia, then New Zealand. So very much jumping around. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so great. I, I also love traveling, so I can really appreciate that. Um, cool. Okay. Perfect. So, so I'm going to say joining me today from Bali, Indonesia, which would be so fun to say. So, awesome. <laughs> uh, and then um, do you have any water or tea nearby or can I offer you some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> You're right. I was like, make so I'm such a dork. Um, do you have some water nearby? Are you good? Yeah, I do. I've got some water. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Sorry. I'm going to make sure I have enough water. Um, and then um, after I wrap up the interview and stop the recording, if you could just stay on the line for a moment just so we cool. can chat. So before we go on with our today's live, it would be great. Absolutely. And then if for any reason uh, one, one of us gets disconnected, yep. just call back in. Okay. Because we can always edit on our end. But um, I always feel like it happened once in three years, but I would say that because it's very easy to fix, you know. Cool. Yeah. Um, no problem. And then, yeah. And then, um, did you have a free gift that you wanted to give away so we can drive traffic to you? Yeah, sure. So um, I can give one of my books away. That's not a problem. Okay. So um, so towards the end of the interview, I'll say, um, I'll say, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience today, Regan? Mm -hmm. Of course, if there's anything specific, you know, that you want to share with them, but that would also be a great time to talk about your free gift. Cool, and no then, problem. But, um, how can how can they get the free gift? Like, do you have a, a URL that you can just give me right now to get it? Yeah, well, look, even if you go to um, like just reganhillier.com and subscribe, they get em they get emailed it immediately. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, any other questions for me before we get started? No, let's do it. Perfect. Okay, so it'll be about thirty minutes, and let's just have some fun. I know you'll be your fabulous, authentic self, and uh, this will be great. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. I'll start the recording. Welcome to Celebrity Status Entrepreneur. This is your host, Amy Yamada, and I'm so excited to have you tuning in for our speaker series. And joining me today from Bali, Indonesia, is celebrity entrepreneur Regan Hillier. And Regan is a serial entrepreneur, coach, educator, and speaker, and she is here to unlock your greatness, disrupt your version of normal, and teach you how to be wildly successful now. And I love that prior to even starting this conversation today that she was sharing with me all the different places that she goes to, and so she just lives in all these amazing places. Uh, but I just wanted to give a warm welcome to you, Regan. Thank you so much for being with, here, with us today. Hey, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Regan, a lot of our listeners are coaches and trainers and entrepreneurs who would love to grow their presence online and in person. So what strategies have you used and taught your clients to grow their their awareness and their presence? Yeah, look, there's, that's a great question, and there's obviously a lot of different things you can do online. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that everything is created from within, so I think the first thing people need to do is get totally clear 
on why they actually want to do that and then what does that look like internally for them initially because if you go out there and if you do the strategies but if, if you're not aligned with actually stepping into a higher level of visibility then you can block it and ultimately you'll find that the strategies just don't work as fast as you want so after you've done that internal yeah. work yeah after you've done that internal work then obviously there's the strategic action and look one of the biggest things I do in terms of growing my following is to literally show up everywhere so I am literally on every platform I am there daily I am you know messaging I am doing a whole lot of value add content and my team repurposes that content and literally gets it everywhere so my goal is literally to be especially online like all over the world all over the internet on every single platform because someone that you know like I love Facebook but some of my tribe might hang out on Twitter or they might be more on Instagram so if you're not showing up somewhere they're not going to find you right right it's a really good point because most people have a favorite social media platform right so if you're not using one of them then of course you're not going to be found by them so it's a really great great tip um but I also love what you're talking about in terms of starting from within so Maybe we can expand on that a little bit, you know, because I'm all about um, mindset and alignment and all of that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so for those people who are really in a space of uncertainty right now, like maybe they've had their business for a year or two and they're just really uncertain about the direction they want to go. They're just like, you know, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I'm just unclear and I feel off alignment. What are some things that you can suggest to them, to that person, mm -hmm. that they can do to really fully align once again with really who they are, what they came here to do, that kind of a thing. Right, absolutely. So I think the first thing they need to do is to get really clear on their big vision and their big picture. You know, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to actually get there. And if it's fuzzy, you're not going to get there. And if it's not like literally crystal clear to the point where you can describe it in massive detail, you just, you're not going to get there, right? So that is the first thing. It's actually, okay. yeah, it's figuring out where do you want to go and why do you want to do that? You know, I say this through, you know, every area of life. If you're looking to create some sort of goal like you, you need to have a big reason behind it it just can't be you know a cool goal or a goal that sounds good or you know I want to make a million dollars because it's just like something someone said I should do like there needs to actually be a huge emotive reason behind it right so that is the first thing and then secondly okay. yeah secondly it's looking at okay well what's going to need to shift and who do I need to become in order to step into that goal and then what is currently actually blocking me being there and you know in this conversation around celebritizing yourself in terms of increasing your visibility and stepping into higher levels of fame online and offline you know you really need to be looking at like well how do you feel about that unconsciously because you know if everything's created from within and something that you want isn't showing up externally then there's some sort of block or limitation so if you're saying you know I want all these followers or I want you know this amount of people on my live streams or, or whatever and they're not there then and there's obviously there's something internally which you haven't resolved yet so it's really figuring out you know what are these blocks and limits like why have you not called in this higher level of of fame of visibility like why are you blocking yourself from doing that mm, that is so good you know I think oftentimes we focus on the external strategies and things that we think we should be doing but really it's the internal work of releasing that which no longer serves the purpose, right? So totally. Um, and I find I found over the years, even in my own personal journey and personal development, that even when I didn't think I was holding on to something, some opportunity would show up where I realized I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I was holding on to that and now right. that I'm aware of it, then I can move forward and do what I can to break through it, you know? Totally. So, totally. Yeah. Have you had any experiences like that yourself? Yeah, look, absolutely. There's There's been so many things because, you know, we're constantly shifting. We're constantly growing. Um, you know, I had a moment probably, it was probably about a year ago in terms of my visibility. And, you know, I'd set the big goal. I was like, okay, I, I want a million followers online. Like, you know, I want to be the female team, Tony Robbins, right? I, I want to have all of this visibility. But the, what was blocking me is that I hadn't actually decided when that was going to happen, right? And one of my coaches asked me, she said, Okay, well, that's, that's great. And I have no doubt that you can go out and you can create that. 
but when are you going to create that? Because at that moment in time, my visibility wasn't really increasing. I wasn't doing anything to increase my online fame. My, I wasn't, you know, I was celebritizing myself, but I wasn't getting rapidly in front of more people. So she said to me, you know, it doesn't really look like it's shifting. And I was like, no, it's not shifting that much. She's like, okay, well, when are you going to call in the million followers? And I realized that I'd been, I'd, I'd locked in the big picture, but I'd constantly put it in the future, right? So I'd gone, oh, well, you know, that'll just, that'll just happen by default. That'll happen happen in five years or 10 years or longer, right? And then all of a sudden I was like, well, hang on, nothing happens in my life just by default. I don't just wake up and go, oh, you know, my business has done a couple of million dollars so far this year. I, that just doesn't happen. It's always intentional, right? So it's always from the space of here's what I'm going to create and I'm going to create it now. And then how do I take the aligned action? And I'd missed the second step. I hadn't actually decided to step into a higher level of visibility now. So the moment I made that choice and simply released that block that it could happen now and it didn't have to happen in the future, I really noticed stuff just shifting around me, which is pretty cool. Mm. This is so good. And even, I mean, I always find that with every one of our celebrities, I, I myself, of course, get inspired too. You know, I, I love what you're talking about because I know that I'm someone who has, uh, has shifted a little bit here and there, but I know that I have more room to grow in terms of believing that it can happen now. Yeah. Like I'm someone who definitely plans for like maybe three to six, maybe even 12 months out, probably more in the three to six months out. Like I, I, it's like I believe in my future self, but my current self, could she do it? Maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? So, right. So I love that you're talking about this because it kind of opens me up to, to say, okay, well, Regan can do it. I, you know, I feel like I'd probably do that too, where I can just right. take that block and say, why, why not now, right? Why not now? What, what is right. it that I'm waiting for that is going to be so different three or six months from now? And why mm-hmm. do I believe, like, I'm comfortable making a decision that's going to start then, but not, you know? So this is, uh, this is really, I hope, I hope that everyone's had, I'm sure there are others that are listening right now that are having these major aha moments. But what I wrote down from what Regan was just saying is that when you said, when are, like what your friend said, when are you going to call in the 1 million followers? Mm-hmm. Like, when are you going to call them in? And it's one's like, how you feel? It's like, yeah, let's just call it in. Like, call it in, you know? And, um, and that it can happen now. So um, right. that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Those are just golden, that's, golden nuggets. That's all right. So, yeah. And, you, oh, go yeah, for it. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, you know, on that, if someone's listening and they're like, okay, you know, I get that. I need to make a decision now. Um, you know, it's this thing of going, okay, cool. Who do I then need to become in order to create that? Because, you know, if you, if you if your internal identity isn't someone who believes they already have a high level of visibility, then it's not going to shift, right? Or you'll get close to it, but you'll bounce back because your identity won't be in alignment. So a simple way for people to start calling it in now after they've made a decision is simply ask themselves, well, if I was to already have that result, what would I be doing? How would I be showing up? What would my next goal be? What would be driving me forward? And really, you know, focusing focusing from that space right like that is that is what's important it's it's who do you choose to become because you can choose to become anyone at any given time right mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely oh this is so good and these, you know i always look at this as um in a form of an action step right so all of you who are listening you can you can take this action step uh even right after this call right where you can say okay what is this that i want you know and what am i going to call it in what do right. I need to do to become the person? Uh-huh. You know, the, who, who do I need to become in order to achieve this vision? Right. And if I were already there, if I've already achieved that goal, what would I be doing? Who would I be surrounding myself? What would be the next vision? Like, I, I always like to think, what, how can I make this an, a committed action step? You know? Right. So what Regan is giving all of us today is, like, super, super powerful. So I would take it and really take this exercise and run with it because, this could be the tipping point for someone that's listening right now. It could be you, whoever's listening, and saying, wow, I never thought of it that way, you know? Totally. And it's just, these are the types of things that open up in these awesome interviews. So thank you for sharing that. Pleasure. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. So what would you say for you has been the number one characteristic or personality trait that you've either adopted or that you naturally have in order to have the level of success that you've had? Um, 
Hmm, that's a great question. I I think there's there's probably a, a merge of a few things, but if I was to pick mm -hmm. one, yeah, if if I was to pick one thing, I really think it would be my drive. Um, you know, I mm -hmm. I literally like once I set my mind to something, there is there's no option like there's no gray with me it's like it's either black or it's white like i'm either in or i'm out like there's no try there's no like oh i'll just like give this a go and see how it goes it's either like i'm doing this or it's not for me right so there's no middle ground and okay. and yeah i i think that really has shaped a lot of my success through different areas of life because literally when i commit to something i go all in and it's not you know i see these people online and they're like i'm fully committed i'm 100 percent in and then i look at their like their actions in their life and i'm like no you're not like you're kidding yourselves like that is not 100 percent in right 100 percent in is literally doing whatever it takes whenever it takes in in whatever way shape or form it takes even when it's hard even when you don't feel like it even when you don't want to show up like that stuff's irrelevant when you're 100 percent in so i think for me like that is a that is a huge thing which really pushes me forward and i notice it in the people i work with as well you know i i think i attract people like that firstly but secondly i think they see that in me and then they go ha huh, you know i can go all in too and it kind of gives them permission as well and when you're all in you know you can't not succeed because there is no other option it's simply a matter of time right 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 absolutely absolutely this is such a great topic too because I think so often people will, it's so funny, this has been a conversation that I've just been having even today um, about how oftentimes, you know, whether something great has happened in your life or something really painful has happened in your life, or even on any level of, of joy or pain, it can easily throw us off track, right? It can easily throw a lot of people off track. And so what the conversation was about earlier today was that no matter what, if you're so committed to your vision, then whether it's a high or a low, whether it's a joyous or a painful experience, it's still the vision that you have for yourself, right? Yeah. So if we're fully committed, then it's about really staying committed all the way, right? I love right. what you said about showing up no matter what. And that's something that I know that, you know, most people can work on, you know? So it's just, it's just good to be aware of that. We can be aware of our emotions and really think about that, take that into consideration. And then as things come up in life, it's like, well, how can we just are you you know and during the hardest of times are you still wanting to show up and, and follow through with what you said you were going to do right so i think that's really really brilliant yeah um, that's massive so i'm going to shift gears a little bit here regan i would love to know what is your next big vision for yourself or your business Hmm. Yeah, so my business really, to be completely honest, if we're talking about this online personal brand, it really is in a place where I love it. Like I am literally in love with my business. I work with soulmate clients and from the outside looking in, most people are probably like, well, how could that get any better? So for me, you know, it's in total alignment. It's just more of it. You know, the next big step, the next vision is literally just cranking it all up. It's just shifting it to another level, you know, and there's things that I'm doing, you know, specifically around visibility in terms of like I'm doing more interviews like this. I'm showing up more, um, you know, more content, more messaging, more live streams, more webinars, right? Getting in front of people, I'm speaking more. So I do have a big focus around visibility right now and really actually cranking that up. Now, if we look at what's behind that, it's, it's the drive to create a bigger impact. So really the answer at the core is like, well, what's next? It's that next level of impact. It's actually stepping that up so that I am just simply impacting more people on a bigger scale. And that's that's what I that's what I think about daily. I, I wake up and I think about my business and I'm literally like, okay, what can I do today to create a bigger impact, to also accelerate my income and to have a whole lot of fun and do it all in alignment at the same time. And I choose to act from that space. Right, right. So, okay, so you were actually cutting in and out most of that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm wondering if we can, um, we, we can try it again and we'll see if we can edit this part out. Sure. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully the connection's better. Okay, so I'll just pick up where I left off with that last question and we'll go from there, okay? Cool, perfect. Okay. Okay, in three, two, one. So, Regan, I want you to shift gears a little bit and ask you, what is your next big vision for yourself or your business? 
Absolutely, it's a great question. So look, the next big step and the next big vision is really, to be honest, more of the same, right? Like my my business, this business, this personal brand is in total alignment with who I am and you know where I wanna go and I literally, this business is just an extension of me being me, right? And I work with complete soulmate clients and it's absolutely amazing and I love it. And from the outside looking in, people are probably like, you know, how does that get any better? But the next level and how it gets better for me is how do I accelerate that? Like, how do I grow this even further? How do I crank it up? How do I increase my invisibility even more? And how do I, if I look at what's underneath this, how do I impact on a bigger scale, right? Because that that is what is driving me. Okay. Yeah, it is literally like how do I shift this impact to reach even more and more and more people in a way where I don't move out of alignment, where it's still totally aligned, where I still work with my ideal tribe of and community of people, and how do I just how do I push that to the next level and how do I create a bigger impact in this world? That's that's what's driving me to, to shift forward, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. So you one of the other things that we have uh, within this series is to talk about how you live your dream life every single day or how you live with intention every single day. So can you give us a little glimpse into your life, which I love, I love how adventurous it is living in different <laughs> so on that you know it really is more of that and like I was sharing with you before this interview I've just been in Malaysia I'm now back in Bali running a mastermind tomorrow I then go to um, LA running an event there then go back to Malaysia then Queenstown New Zealand then you know so it's just it's just all over the show but it's intentional and I've created that way and I love it that way so for me you know staying in flow and staying in alignment for me, my anchor is my mindset work. So without fail, you know, I literally go deep and I do my mindset work on a daily basis. And that happens regardless. That is not, it doesn't matter which time zone I'm in. It doesn't matter if I'm tired. It doesn't matter if I have, you know, if I'm busy or if I'm on a plane. That stuff happens regardless. So for me, that's how I continue to intentionally create. And I just, I never drop the ball on that because I know that's the thing that creates the biggest impact in my life and in my business. Mm, that sounds great. Okay. And then thirdly, you need to take massive aligned action, whatever that looks like in your business right now, in order to get you to that big picture. So I simply ask myself this every single day in my business. Here's what I know how to do every single day. I say, okay, I'm clear on my big picture and where I'm going. I'm also clear on who I need to become in order to get there. So I ask myself this, if I was to take massive action from that space, being that person already, in order to massively accelerate me to that big picture, what would I be doing right now? And that's what I go and do. And that's where my strategy comes from. That's where I figure out what I need to do. That's where I figure out, okay, well, what would I be doing? I would be doing more of this. I'd be doing less of this. I'd be not doing this. I'd be doing more of this. And that is literally where the action comes from, is from asking myself, what would I be doing to accelerate myself to that big vision, acting as if I've already received it? Mm. Oh, that's so good. So you do that on a daily basis? Daily. Yeah. Daily. That's exactly how I know what to do in my that's business. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is fantastic. Um, so, Regan, this has been so much fun. Uh, but else that you would like to share with our audience today? Look, the biggest thing is just to know that whatever you're dreaming about right now, whatever you are hoping for or wishing for, or, or you know, if you were to get deep into your core in terms of what you actually desire, it's possible. Like, really, there's there's someone out there that's done what you want to do, right? So why not you? You know, seriously, why not you? It's going to be someone. Mm -hmm. So why don't you step up and actually claim that, right? But again, it comes back to what we talked about around making a decision around having that happen first. But just know that whatever you want to do, it is absolutely possible. And especially if you create it from within, instead of trying to do it all externally, you are going to get there so much faster. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. 
And I, I think that uh, you were talking about a free gift that I can find on your site. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. So I'm happy to give away one of my books for free. It's called Make Your Passion Your Paycheck. And if you just go to reganhillier.com, you can subscribe and you'll get emailed that straight away. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing book that basically steps through how to monetize what you're passionate about and how to grow a business and create intentional income around anything that you are passionate about in this world. Okay, so it's totally putting it in out again. So oh, no. um, let's try that one more time. Okay. okay. Hold on one second. Okay, three, two, one. So again, I believe that you also had a free gift for our audience on your website. Is that correct? That is right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if they go, yeah, that's right. It's a book, so it's called Make Your Passion Your Paycheck. And if they go to just reganhillier dot com, they can download it and access it there. If you just subscribe, and it's a really awesome book, basically around how to monetize what you're passionate about and how to grow a business around anything that you're passionate about in this world. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much. That's so generous of you. Pleasure. And Thank you, Regan, for being here as one of our celebrity status entrepreneurs. And we do hope to chat with you again in the near future. It's been so much fun. Pleasure, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And to those of you who are listening to our series, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I empower you to elevate your presence to celebrity status so you can make a bigger impact and live your dream life every single day. Take care. Thanks. All right, awesome. Yeah, so sorry, I don't know why the connection was like, I mean, obviously we're in different countries. And yeah, so, <laughs> that's I was right. Go, I was going to go a little bit longer, but it just kept cutting in and out. I was like, oh, maybe I should just uh, really kind of focus on what we just talked about. And, and, that's and cool. Good, but, um, yeah, awesome. so you were able to hear me okay on your side? Yes, no, it was perfect. I could hear you crystal clear. Oh, good, good. Okay. So what I'll do is, so I, I used to work in radio, so uh-huh. I have a connection with a production guy that will do my editing, you know, so cool. I'll, I'll, um, I'll have him edit and take out those those parts of it, and I'll listen back to it. Um, if for some reason it just really doesn't sound great, do you mind if we do another date sometime? Not at all. Week? No, just let me know. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, and I'll see if there's anything we can do to problem solve it, but, um, cool. but yeah, I was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like such a great interview, but it's like... <laughs> You know, like there were times where it's like I shouldn't hear anything. Oh uh, no! Mainly those times that I I had you just repeat it, you know. So, cool. Yeah. Um. So it probably will be fine. Cool. It'll be fine. Um. So I'll listen back just to make sure. So um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you again for being a part of this. That's and, all right. Uh, would love to stay connected, and um, if there's anything else that I can do to help you, I'm here. Um. Yeah. That's awesome. No, you're more than welcome. It was an amazing interview. And yeah, just let us know all the details when it comes out and we can do all that as well. Okay, fantastic. Well, you have a great rest of your day. I don't know what kind of day it is there. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it's um, um, nearly... we can uh, chat again soon. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Have a great day. I'll chat to you soon. You too. Bye. Okay. Hey gang, what was going on with the angry faces on the screen? <laughs> I was trying so hard not to um, just laugh. Who was, all right, who was it? Who was being angry? Oh, I can't see. Was anyone on when those angry faces were on? It was full on. There was like streams of anger and then there was streams of sadness, all these crying faces. I was like, what's that about? <laughs> and then someone started giving me all this love. All right, who's on? Hey, Allie. Hey, Gina, cool. Oh, you're an inspiration, Ellie. <laughs> Megan, who's sending angry face bombs? It was so funny. I was actually going, oh my gosh, someone's really angry at me. Enough angry faces. <laughs> be gone, hater, Megan. Hey, Vicky, Lisa, someone has too much time on their hands, too much time to be angry. Someone's trolling. <laughs> love it. Vicky, do you love their trolling? We love the interview. Hey, Deborah, I'm so excited to see you really soon. Uh, Ellie says, no idea. Get him off. We just filled you with love. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. That's so funny. It was crazy. It was crazy. All right. Those are a cool little interview as well. So when I... Let's chat to you guys that are on the line. So if you guys have any questions about... um 
how I do interviews or get interviews or anything around that process, now is the time to ask me because I do have a couple of minutes. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something really profound. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, that's right. So when I'm on interviews, um, I used to, I used to get really nervous about them, okay, and I used to literally, I used to be like, okay, you know, I need to know all the questions, and I got, I always got the person to, um, to send me all the questions prior, and I'd like script out all the answers, and literally be like, okay, cool, like, I'd have all my like bullet points and keys and everything, and I'd, I'd get really nervous about it, to be honest, um, because I felt like it had to be perfect, right, I felt like, because it was an interview, like, I had to say the right thing, and, and I had to like do the right thing and be perfect and what if I said the wrong thing and what if I froze and I used to get really in my head about it right give me a yes guys by the way if, if you get that because I used to really battle with this like big time and um it's kind of funny so I'd always script out these answers and I'd always make sure like everything was kind of all there and, and perfect and whatever and um and then there was this one lady where I was <laughs> I remember I was doing an interview and she sent me all the questions and I had all my answers and she's like She's like, um, I actually don't want to talk about any of that. Like, I want to talk about this stuff. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean you want to talk about not the questions? So I've got all my answers. And she's like, is that all right? She's like, all right, let's go. Let's hit record. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I started to freak out. And then I was like, hey, Regan, calm, breathe, set the intention. I was like, the intention is it's going to be perfect. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to know everything that I need to say. And I'm going to like rock it. And I was like, okay. And I started breathing. I was just focusing on breathing. I was so scared. And, um, yeah, it was funny. All of a sudden, she started asking me these questions, and the stuff was just coming out of my mouth, and I just remember going, oh my gosh, this is actually just like having a conversation with someone, like just like now, like I'm just talking to you guys. Oh no, you're not really talking back. You kind of are. Ellie is. Hey, Ellie. How do you get interviews? I'll answer that in a sec. Hell yes. Um, and it's funny, like I literally, I literally just started going, oh my gosh, this is actually... This is like an organic conversation now. And what was interesting is that then when I thought about it, I was like, hmm, you know, everything I believe in, everything I, I tell you guys, everything I talk about, about messaging and, you know, unlocking your true message and really doing it in a raw, unfiltered, real way. I was like, why the hell am I trying to write out my answers? Like, what's going on there? And then I realized in some ways I've been trying to I've been trying to like manufacture my message basically, which is everything I stand against. It's everything I hate and don't like about people online if they like manufacture their message to make it perfect when really I just needed to actually be me. I just needed to trust and I needed to speak from the heart all with the intention and the decision that I was always going to know what to say. It was always going to be perfect. It was going to be inspirational and it was going to be amazing. Yeah, you get this, Vicky. We had a really similar conversation about this um, on our call the other day, right? We're talking about this on videos. Same thing. I used to get so stressed out about it. Um, but yeah, and then when I got into this place of flow and this place of alignment and this place of trust, I was literally just like, oh, oh, like this kind of, this works a little bit better, right? So that's kind of an interesting thing. So now, like even if they send through the questions, I don't prepare. I will do a quick scan just to check it's not like, I don't know, about like how to build an airplane or something. Don't know much about that, right? I'd be like, ah, oh, let me check. So I just check, I do a quick scan. I'm like, okay, cool. Like standard questions, business, mindset, whatever, life etc. Um, and then I literally delete them. I do not look at them. They're always like, have you read the questions? Have you got the questions? I'm like, yeah, but I don't have them on me. I'm just going to flow. Okay. And I tell them, they're like, oh, great. And most of the time they are literally, they're literally like, oh, that's great. Like that, those are the best interviews when, when they're not like, when you're not thinking about the answer to the question, right? So true. Flow and alignment, trusting the process. Yep. You got it. It's funny how that shows up everywhere, right, Ellie? That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, Ellie says, how do you get the interviews? Okay, this is a really good question, and there's um there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways um, how to build a plane. I know I don't know where it came from, Vicky. I think I saw you and I was like, Vicky's gonna be on the plane soon to Bali. Um, how do you get interviews? Okay. Step number one for how to get interviews is you need to make a decision around increasing your visibility. Okay, so interviews are a great way for more people to see you. They're a great way to show up. They're a great way to showcase showcase, showcase your expertise as an expert and your greatness and what you have to share. They're also a great way for people, obviously the person promoting the interview is going to go send it out. They're going to go and promote it. They're going to literally like tell people about it. People are going to listen to it and watch it, right? And I've had, by the way, I've had so many cool experiences. What's my hair doing? It's all like freaking bumpy up there. I don't like it. It's like 
what time is it? Oh, it's 9 a.m. I've been on call since 5 a.m. I don't think I looked at this when, I don't think I had the light on when I did my hair. Anyway, what was I talking about? Um, interviews are a great way to get exposure and I've had, I've had like a whole lot of really cool things happen from interviews. So for example, I've done interviews and then I have got clients, which I haven't known in the past. People that have listened to the interview, found me online, messaged me and been like, I need to work with you. And I'm like, wait, where are you coming from? Who are you? And they're like, I heard your interview. I'm like, oh, cool. Right. So that's happened. Um, one of my like amazing team members. So my basically business development manager that now runs and oversees my whole team, Narelle, she came through an interview. She actually listened to an interview I did like a year ago or something. Um, and it was an awesome interview, but it was a pretty like small interview. It wasn't on a massive platform. <laughs> With bumpy hair. Thanks, Ali. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a, um, yeah, it wasn't like a massive big like Forbes interview, right? It was just like a little podcast and she was someone that was listening in, started following me and then when I advertised for a team member, she reached out and she's like, oh my gosh, I love your stuff, right? Now, isn't that cool that I can then attract in my team from a place of someone being aligned with my message and who I am and how I do things? So that's happened as well. Um, visibility has increased. I've definitely noticed since I started doing interviews an increase in, in followers, um, um, this stuff should be on an interview, by the way. This is all really good stuff. I'm just kind of handing you guys. So, okay, I'm telling you why interviews are amazing and you should be doing it. But first things first, if you want to do more interviews, you need to make a decision around your visibility. So if you don't feel comfortable about stepping into a high level of visibility, if you don't feel comfortable about celebritizing yourself, if you don't feel comfortable about building a high level of fame online, um, then chances are if you go and take that action around, I'm going to get more interviews, um, you're probably, they're just going to fall through, right? Or it's just not going to kind of happen, okay? So I would be getting really clear on like, what are your thoughts around visibility? What are your thought? What are your thoughts around you know fame and whatever way that means to you? What are your What are your thoughts around impact and, and reaching more people and getting clear on that and setting those intentions? Okay, because trust me, like even if you just did that on a really deep level. I'm not going to say you don't need to work, do the work, but shit will just shift and people will just come to you. Like a lot of the interviews I get, people just email me, they approach me, they find me, they're like, can I please interview? I'm like, yeah, but I'm in a place where I'm like really focused on building my visibility and impacting more people right now, right? So that's a really valid point. Um, and then strategically, there's a few things you can do. So you can uh, say hire a publicist, for example, which is someone who basically pitches you to different people that will interview you, different media outlets. So you can do that. Um, you can you can just you can do it yourself. You can find people, um, and you know, like some of, some of the biggest interviews I've been on, I've just hustled for myself. To be honest, I remember um, it was a while ago, but I made a decision. I was like, I want to do more interviews. Okay, that that was my decision, and then. And then I was like, um, I was like, okay, cool. Okay, well, how do I get more interviews? And I was like, okay, well, I was like, okay, why don't I Google? What did I do? I was like, why don't I Google like the top 20 like business podcasts or something like that? And then I, so I got this kind of list of them, right? And then I just went through, ah, oh, safe flight, Vicky. See you in a few hours. See you at my villa in Bali real soon. Um, yeah, so I just started like emailing and Facebooking all of the people that were behind those podcasts. And um, funnily enough, not many of them replied out of 20. In fact, I think like two replied out of 20. Um, but interestingly enough, one of them was the number one business podcast. And he replied like straight away. And he's like, yeah, I'd love to have you on the show, right? And that was a massive show. Um, that was Nathan Lasker's show. And actually, if you go to my Twitter account, if you go to, if you're a Twitter bunny, and if you go to Twitter, Twitter bunny, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if you go to Twitter and you go to the pinned post on Twitter, you'll actually see that interview there. And it says how, um, I think my income at that point was, was about 130K a month or something like that. It was, it was about six months ago, I think. So it's literally got a full breakdown of all my income. So it's a really powerful interview. It's like, it's hardcore. It's really, he's, he's like trying to rattle me, but there's nothing to rattle. So he, he didn't really succeed. And we ended up being great friends out of it. Um, so I would go and listen to that on the side note, cause it's a really cool interview. But my point is, is that people see that and they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe you've been on Nathan's show. You've been on the top. Like, that's amazing. How did you get that? I'm like, I just asked for it. Right. I made a decision and then I actually just like hustled and messaged them and was like, I want to be on the show. And they were like, okay. And, and I knew what they were looking for. I listened to the show and I was like, okay, they're all about like income and numbers. I was like, all right, I'm just going to tell them my numbers and my income and ask if I can be on the show. And they were like, yeah, 
like here's a link like there was no conversation right it was just like book in so you need to know if you're pitching yourself to to um, podcasts and people that are going to interview you in media, what are they looking for, right? If I'd gone to Nathan and said, hey, like, I want to be on your show and I want to talk about like mindset and alignment and like truth and spirituality and how to, be, how to create a business from the core, he's going to be like, get staffed, right? That's not for my show. Like, I want to know how much money you made and where it came from, right? <laughs> and I want to be really hardcore about it at the same time. They're 15-minute interviews. They're really short. Um, so here's the thing. Like, I understood what they want. Wanted and I gave them what they wanted. Okay, so that's one of the biggest things. It's like finding finding where you want to be, where you want to show up, and then simply asking and giving them what they actually want, right? Um, I've done two interviews this morning. They were both really different. Yeah, there's still the core of my message and who I am, and we talked about mindset, but the first one was very much like we were getting into a really spiritual conversation. The second one was how to celebritize yourself online effectively. So there was a lot more talk about visibility and fame. And you've just got to understand what people are looking for so that you can give them what they want. And then and then if they want it, they're going to be like, of course. Like, yeah, come do this, right? So that's how you get interviews, Ali. You literally make a decision and you either hire someone to pitch you for them. And you can even just hire a VA. To be honest, you don't even need a publicist. You can hire a VA to look up different interviews and then pitch you for them and just send a quick email or a Facebook message and literally be like, hey, I'm writing on behalf of this person. She's an amazing fit for your show. Here's why. It's that simple. When can we book in? Um, or you can do it yourself, but it needs to come down to first taking the mindset work um, around actually aligning and being okay with stepping into that level of visibility and being seen and you know exposure. That is that is one of the core most important things. All right, I have a call. I'm gonna. Um, it's a private client call so I'm not going to live stream I've been live streaming all morning I will love you and leave you guys but thank you all for being on thanks for the hater for all your for all your flow of hate and then your flow of tears like that was crazy I was trying to focus and all I could see is that which is kind of funny because it made me just want to laugh and she'd be like why are you laughing it was just an audio call <laughs> more tears <laughs> so funny <laughs> and then some love <laughs> and thank you all, all the guys that backed it up with love you guys are amazing um but hey like if you don't have hate you're not you're not playing a big enough game you're not making enough noise right all right I'm gonna jump off I could sit here and chat to chat to you guys all day but I'm gonna jump on another call but go out and have an absolutely epic day go and get some interviews go and increase your visibility that's your that's your challenge that's your action item right have an epic day and remember of course you absolutely can have it all ciao guys have a brilliant day chat soon